Ready when you are. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our webinar series uh, that was going to focus on the resurgence, resurgence too. I want to take this opportunity and just say thank you and good morning to all of those who are joining us this morning. We are very excited to speak about some of the opportunities that we are going to have available coming here shortly. We're gonna get into some of the details here to make it easier for you and your application process. But overall, really this is a tool or this is an opportunity that Mayor Dickens and this city council have really worked to provide to our small businesses. Atlanta small businesses are at the core of our success as a city and we want to do and the mayor and the city council want to do what they can to ensure that you're successful post COVID. We understand and know that COVID has had has played a big role in all of our lives, but particularly for our businesses that have been here throughout this entire time to help support community and individuals in their needs. So this is our chance to say thank you and our opportunity to say, what can we do here at Invest Atlanta to help ensure your success today and moving forward? Because we believe that the sky continues to be the limit when it comes to Atlanta and Atlanta success and Atlanta support for small businesses. So with that, I'm super excited to introduce the team and to let you know they're gonna walk you through this program. And if you have any questions, you can provide those in our chat. If not, we are also going to be available to you. And this is not the only one. So if you missed it or you wanna hear back again, you'll have an opportunity to listen to this recording, to join another webinar. We'll have plenty of them. So if you want more focused help, we're going to be here to help you apply. But that's gonna be the key. I need you to finish the application. Many individuals in round one started the application, but did not finish. We are not able to evaluate your application unless you push that submit button. So please take the opportunity and the time to complete the application, submit your application. We're available if we have any questions. And again, thank you for your commitment to the city of Atlanta, because together we are making a difference. And with that, let me introduce Melody Carter, who's really done a phenomenal job in leading this effort, and she is going to run us through today's schedule. Melody, and I should say, I think I said that whole thing. My name is Dr. Heloisa Clementich, and I'm president and CEO here at Invest Atlanta. And it's truly my honor to be able to work for you, our small businesses, to really help support the future of our great city. Melody, thanks, Heloisa. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for that introduction. As always mentioned, I'm Melody Eccles. I'm the Assistant Director of Invest Atlanta's ARP Programming. Happy to be, with, be here with you all this morning uh, and share a presentation on our resurgence grant funds. Um, we will be covering a lot of information regarding the application, as I always mentioned, a lot of details. So if you have any questions, I already see some rolling through, but please drop them in the Q&A. Our team will do our best to answer any of the questions throughout the presentation. So also keep an eye out for those responses um, and we'll address any of the unanswered questions at the end. Um, Michelle, can you go ahead and start the presentation? go to the next slide. Awesome. So today we are going to go through a lot um, overall, just the purpose of the grant fund, the timeline, we'll get into eligibility requirements, grant amounts, as well as receipt requirements, use of proceeds, those eligible expenses, compliance requirements, documentation, and also just the review process of applications. Um, next slide, please. So the purpose of the Research Grant Fund really is to use federal COVID relief funding under the American Rescue Plan Act to provide reimbursable grants to small businesses and nonprofits throughout the city. Invest Atlanta is aware of the financial impact that our small businesses and nonprofits have faced over the past couple of years due to COVID. 
and we hope that this grant funding will help alleviate some of that burden. Um, next slide, please. So here's the timeline starting with today. Um, we have educational webinars. In addition to this one, we're also hosting one at 6 p.m. tonight. Um, so if you have to jump off or you'd like to listen in again, we have another one this evening. Um, and then application will open on March 1st and will remain open until April 29th. Um, so we're leaving the application open for two months and hoping that that will give our businesses plenty of time to submit a successful application. So for this round, both for-profits and non-profits are eligible to apply, and there are a few key differences in eligibility criteria for each of those that I just wanted to walk through. Um, perfect. So for for-profits, an eligible for-profit must have a 2022 City of Atlanta business license. Um, they must also have fewer than 250 excuse me, and 50 employees as of December 31st, 2021. Um, we're also asking that they attest to having a financial hardship, such as declines in revenues, other impacts of COVID, um, and also can attest to not having received funds from any other sources that were used on the same expenses that um, you're asking for reimbursement out of the resurgence grant funds. And then for nonprofits, uh, next slide, please. Nonprofits a little different. Obviously, a lot of nonprofits are not required to have a City of Atlanta business license. Um, so a nonprofit can either provide their 2022 City of Atlanta business license or a 2022 City of Atlanta letter of good standing, in addition to the organization's IRS determination letter. Um, and then similarly to nonprofits must have 250 employees or less as of December 31st, 2021. Um, also attesting to having a financial hardship due to COVID and not having received any other funds that were used on the same expenses that, um, that an applicant's asking for reimbursement here. And then also wanted to note just a few items that would make an applicant ineligible. Obviously, any businesses engaged in any illegal activity, um, corporate-owned franchises are ineligible, life insurance companies, um, financial businesses, banks, finance companies, um, businesses located in a foreign country, government-owned entities. Um, next slide, I think there's a few others that I noted. Yep, yeah. um, engaged in any adult business as defined by city code, businesses owned or operated by officials or employees of the city or of Invest Atlanta, pyramid sale, distribution plans, um, liquor stores, bars, and I did want to know any businesses that have previously defaulted or are not in good standing on a city of Atlanta or Invest Atlanta loan, grant, or any other assistive financing. So getting into the grant amounts and receipt requirements, um, grant amounts are up to $40,000 in reimbursable grants. Uh, so they are reimbursable and they can cover costs associated with COVID, the cost of business interruptions due to COVID. Um, we'll go over specific eligible expenses in just a, a few slides. Um, but since they are reimbursable, uh, next slide, please. We are required to ask applicants to provide receipts and proofs of payments for expenses that you're asking for reimbursement. Um, so I can, if you go to the next slide, there's a list of what is an acceptable receipt, what is an acceptable proof of payment, um, that, so that's invoices, receipts, again, expenses are eligible as of March 3rd, 2021 or later. So we need to see that date on the invoice or the receipt. Um, we need to see proof that the vendor was paid. So if not a paid receipt, then we'll need to see um, either a, if it was a check payment, we'll need to see the canceled check, the wire transfer, credit card or bank statements would also be helpful. Um, if a payment app is used, Venmo, PayPal, things like that. Um, screenshot showing the, the payment confirmation transaction number um, with the date, the amount, and the status of the payments. Um, if an applicant is asking for payroll to be reimbursed, we'll need to see timesheets and payroll records for the period. Um, and also, if an applicant is requesting reimbursement for commercial rent or mortgage, um, applicant will have to provide a fully executed commercial lease. Um, that lease must be up to date. So if it is a renewal, we'll need to see the latest renewal and it must be signed by both the applicant and the landlord. 
So what expenses are eligible to be considered for reimbursement? Um, we'll get into this. First and foremost, March 3rd, 2021 or later is the eligible um, period for reimbursement. Anything COVID-19 related, if your business had to pivot their business model due to COVID and it required some investment, um, then that is potentially eligible for reimbursement. Um, next slide, please. So specifically, if your business had to purchase or lease any machinery or equipment um, or modify any machinery or equipment to adhere to COVID-19 requirements, that is potentially eligible. Um, purchase of any PPE, sanitation, disinfecting supplies or equipment, um, other, other expenses like that to help keep a clean and safe environment. Um, rent, commercial rent or commercial mortgage payments are eligible. Um, we can, um, we cannot provide reimbursement for rent or mortgage payments for a home-based business. Home-based businesses are eligible, but they cannot submit um, expenses for their home rent or mortgage. Um, payroll and benefits costs through March 31st, 2022 are eligible. Next slide, please. Cost to retain employees, utilities costs, other operating costs. Um, if an applicant had to implement any prevention or mitigation tactics, um, they had to reconfigure their space to adhere to social distancing, put up barriers, partitions, things of that nature are eligible for reimbursements. Um, if an applicant invested in some sort of technical assistance, counseling or other services like that to help their business, um, help with business planning needs is eligible and just any other necessary expenditure. At the end of the day, you all know your business better than we do. You all know the nuance of the business and what investments you had to make in order for your businesses, in order for your businesses to stay operating throughout COVID. So anything that is tied or directly correlated to a necessary expenditure due to COVID is um, potentially eligible for reimbursement. So compliance requirements. Um, again, this is a reimbursable grant. It's not a loan, um, but we do ask that our applicants comply with just a few requirements. Um, first being that we hope that our applicants will use best efforts to expand or retain their current levels of employment. Um, in addition, we ask that our grantees um, use best efforts to complete at least 15 hours of community service with a 501c3 organization of their choice. Obviously, if, if the applicant is a 501c3 organization, we ask that they um, volunteer time with a different 501c3 organization. There's no list of what organizations we ask that you volunteer with, just that they are located within the city of Atlanta and can be of your choice and at your time. Um, also within one year of receiving the funds, we are we do ask for a progress report that is attached to the grant agreement, just asking different different metrics, like if you if your business was um, was able to add any employees, how your revenue is doing. We just want to we just want to see and make sure that the funds that we're providing actually did help your business grow and thrive um, throughout this time. So that progress report will be sent out via survey that you can fill out electronically and submit back to us. Also, and I mentioned this previously, um, asking our applicants to attest to having a financial hardship such as declines in revenues um, or impacts during periods of closure. Um, also asking our applicants to attest that they will use the funds for COVID-19 prevention or mitigation tactics or expenditures due to COVID. Um, and again, asking that applicants um, attest to not having received funds from any other funding sources or federal funds um, to cover the same expenses that are being reimbursed under the resurgence program. And I'll get into that a little bit more in the next few slides. So documentation requirements, and I do want to take probably the bulk of time going through the required documents because 
as Eloisa mentioned at the beginning of the call, there were so many applicants last round that started an application and sort of fell off. And, and we noticed that a big part of it was, it was right around where applicants were asked to provide this documentation. We've been very thoughtful and put a lot of time to figure out what documentation we absolutely need to provide in order for us to stay compliant with Treasury. Um, and so we've we've cut the amount of documents um, a little bit and hopefully um, will be a much smoother process and easier for, for our businesses to provide this. So for for-profits and non-profits, similarly to the eligibility requirements, the required documents list is slightly different, but um, there are a lot of similarities as well. So for-profits first, I'll just go line by line um, just to make sure that we hit every document. Um, for-profits will need to provide a driver's license or other government issued ID um, of an authorized representative of the business. Um, we do ask that any documentation that has personal information like a driver's license number, a passport ID number, or your date of birth that you redact that information. We don't necessarily want to have all of um, your personal identifiable information in our system. So if you could please redact that information, that would be very helpful. Um, we are asking for payroll documentation as of December 31st, 2021. Again, our, one of our eligibility requirements is that applicants have 250 employees or less. Um, so the payroll documentation can be detailed payroll journals reflecting the number of employees or um, the IRS form 941, where you can declare how many employees um, your business had in that quarter. For for-profits, again, a 2022 City of Atlanta business license. We understand last round that a lot of businesses had um, some holdup getting their license from the city. Um, so we are able to help help verify that a business is compliant if a business has applied and has paid for their business license, but maybe just doesn't have the, the license physically in hand just yet. So as long as you know you can prove that you paid um, for your business license, you have that confirmation that we can double check in the city of Atlanta system. So hoping to, to meet businesses halfway there. Also for for-profits, if you're a limited partnership, a corporation or an LLC, We'll need to see your 2022 annual Secretary of State registration. Um, and as well, we'll need a save affidavit um, to, uh, for the business owner of, of the business applying. Um, and the save, we'll have a copy of the save affidavit listed on the application as well as listed on our Best Atlanta website. There's blank templates for all of these documents um, on the website if needed. Next slide, please. And then continuing for for-profits, uh, Form W-9. Again, that form, we have link templates on our website and it will also be included in the application. We will also need a certificate designating authorized grantee representative that must be notarized. This is just to ensure that whomever is signing the grant agreement is in fact an authorized representative of the business. Um, and then, the biggest document that I, I want to spend a bit of time on is the duplication of benefits certification and supporting documentation. And if you were a recipient of resurgence last round, then you know um, all about the duplication of benefits certification. And this is a certification form that we had to create to ensure that we are complying with U.S. Treasury. Um, as I mentioned, we are asking our applicants to attest that they did not receive any um, funding from other funding sources to cover the same expenses. At the end of the day, we just need to ensure that businesses are not double dipping um, into different funds to cover the same expenses. Uh, for example, if, a, if an applicant received um, PPP money that covered some of their 2021 uh, payroll costs, then that applicant can not also ask for reimbursement from the resurgence grant fund for that payroll cost. So the duplication of benefits certification form, it asks the applicants to disclose what other um, funding sources, COVID relief funding that they received and provide supporting documentation to show that those funds were actually received and that they were spent 
So again, for example, if a business received PPP, that business will have to declare that on the certification form and provide us with the PPP um, loan documents as well as payroll records to show that the amount of PPP that was received was spent on payroll. And then our, our application processors will analyze to make sure that there is no double dipping um, into both pots of money. Um, so that's the duplication of benefit certification form. In addition, we're also asking businesses to fill out a financial hardship affidavit. And again, this is just attesting that a business um, did experience a financial hardship due to COVID. Um, and, and we created this, this affidavit and you'll notice we're not asking for any financial records from applicants. We're not asking for profit and loss statements. We're not asking for tax returns. And that was in a response to some of the feedback that we heard last round and just realizing that a lot of businesses did not have that information on hand. And it really, it really created a barrier for a lot of our businesses to complete a successful application. So what InvestOne has done has compiled many different sources of data to make the case that all small businesses, nonprofits in the city of Atlanta were financially impacted. So we have created that case for the entire grant program so that our applicants do not have to provide that information individually. We are asking that um, just for a little extra compliance comfort that our applicants fill out and sign this affidavit instead. And then again, require documents. If you are submitting expenses to cover commercial rent or commercial mortgage, we will need a copy of the current fully executed commercial lease. Next slide, please. Okay, so for nonprofits, most of the documentation is pretty much the same. Um, the only difference is, again, most nonprofits, unless, unless they're a corporation, are not required to register on Secretary of State. So if you're a nonprofit that is a corporation, then yes, we will need to see your 2022 Secretary of Registration, um, Secretary of State Registration, excuse me. If a nonprofit has their City of Atlanta 2022 business license, that's great, please submit it. If your organization is not required to have a 2022 City of Atlanta business license, we ask that you provide your 2022 City of Atlanta letter of good standing. Um, also, we ask that our nonprofits provide their IRS determination letter. And then all of the other documentation really is the same. It's, it's just the business license and the Secretary of State um, registration that, that differs a little bit from for-profits to nonprofits. So I won't go through all those details again, but they are the same. And then finally, reviewing applications. Applications will be reviewed as they are submitted. So the application period is open from March 1st um, to April 29th, so that's a two-month window. However, if, if applicants are submitting their applications early on March, we will review them as they come in to hopefully just have a smooth um, review and disbursement process. Um, as Eloisa mentioned, we cannot review applications that did not press the submit button. We cannot review incomplete applications. So please, please, please take the time to gather up all this documentation. So come March 1st, um, you're in a good position to submit a full application that could be reviewed as soon as possible. And just some helpful hints, all of this information is available at investatlanta.com. If you go to investatlanta.com, there's an update box right at the front of the page, you can't miss it, that has a link to a resurgence landing page. We have a live chat that you can chat with a representative from us, ask questions. Um, we also have a resurgence specific email. You can send any questions to resurgence at investatlanta.com. Um, this webinar will be recorded and put on the website if you'd like to rewatch it. Again, we are also having an additional session this evening at 6 p.m. Um, we will have more throughout the month um, and the webinar recordings are available on both investatlanta.com as well as Invest Atlanta's Facebook page. And then one other helpful hint that I just wanted to um, mention is, is regarding the business name that you include in your application. It, it creates a much, much smoother review process if an applicant 
puts their legal business name on all of their documents. We really need to ensure that all the documents that we have on hand match exactly what your business is registered under um, or was organized under. So make sure that you have the legal business name down to the comma LLC, the comma Inc period, um, having the exact legal business name will help tremendously in the review process. And I think that is all I have. I wanted to make sure we had plenty of time for Q&A. Um, and I see there are plenty in the Q&A chat. Um, I don't know if anyone from the team has been keeping an eye out or wants to get started with that. Yeah, um, if you want, Melody, there were some I didn't know the answers to, so I skipped them. So maybe you can be our expert on those. So the first one is, can a subcontractor use the independent contractor's business address for his business license? So this person must be a barber, stylist, individual business working in the same location. So maybe that's I, I, so... That's a great question. I think that's one we may have to follow up with the city um, to answer that. I don't, I don't wanna give a, an incorrect answer, but it's my understanding is wherever the, the business is being conducted is the address that you will apply for your business license. Um, but again, we can confirm with the city, whoever asked that question, if you could please send an email to resurgence at investatlanta.com, I'd be happy to follow up with you. Thank you. You know, and I do want to just call out, um, I think that one came from Eric. Thank you for that. It's sometimes what we've noticed from our last time is it's so it's particular to a business that we just want to drill down so that we can um, get you an answer. So if you don't mind, if, uh, we'll put it in the chat too, or Matt, someone can resurgence. Um, what was the email? Now resurgence at investatlanta.com. Okay. All right. The next one, what is the process? process of getting a city of Atlanta letter of good standing. Yep, so there is, um, I can drop a link in the chat. There is a, um, a city of Atlanta webpage for nonprofits to go to and register. It's not registering, it's um, applying or requesting a letter of good standing. So okay. it's a city of Atlanta webpage um, and I can get that link. I, I actually have that melody. I'll drop it in while you answer the next question. So this is the city of Atlanta letter of good standing is for nonprofits. It's not for businesses. So don't get confused. Correct. Yep. Okay. Next one. Um, want to confirm that hospitality establishments getting 51% or greater of 2021 gross sales for alcohol are not allowed to apply. That is correct. Any business that that has 51% or greater gross sales of alcohol are ineligible, unfortunately, for this grant program. Okay. Uh, well, uh, are applicable home-based utility expenses reimbursed? If they reimburse based on the percentage of business use of home space occupied per the IRS-based requirements. This one may require more attention, but Malady? So my, my first um, inclination is no similar to home rent or mortgage. Um, if you're a home-based business, we cannot reimburse for that. We cannot reimburse um, for utilities as well, home utilities. Um, if Okay. That yeah, sounds good. That's, that's okay. <laughs> okay. So the next one is um, they're a cleaning contractor. They've had to hire extra contractors that they give a 1099 to pay them. Is that eligible for reimbursement? So if they are, that is also a nuanced one. So payroll is eligible. In this case, it sounds like they're not technically employees of the business, but they are subcontracted. Um, to deliver my, a service. Right, my thinking is that, you know, you can provide pr proof via those 1099s that you're, those are technically your employees. I mean, not on paper, yeah. but if you can provide the proof that they were paid, then I would consider that um, submitting payroll. I, I'd agree, Melody, I think that's a good call. As long as we could prove that, and, and if we need to, we may have to write something for us that just says, we instead, because many startups don't hire individuals, they use the 1099s 
So as long as we can understand what you're doing, I think you'll be fine. Yeah. Okay, and it may next- be helpful, oh, sorry, in that case, um, if it is a subcontract, if there's some sort of subcontract agreement to accompany the um, 1099s, that would also help substantiate the expense. The save affidavit required, is that the same save affidavit required for the business license? I believe they are different. Um, Investment Lena has their own specific save affidavit and there is a link to a blank template um, on our website and it will also be included in the application. So it is a little different. Um, you know what, that's a good point, Shannon. We will take a look and see if we could adopt that one too. I will have to ask our lawyers and our auditors, but if we can, that would be one less document as long as the timing would work. Yeah, I did want to, I wanted to note that too. We need to make sure that when you're submitting your save affidavits and your other um, documents that are notarized that it's within the last few months. We can't accept one that was March of 2021. It needs to be somewhat recent. Okay, to that point, we have another one. If I register for my Atlanta business license now, 2022, now meaning, let's just say today, February 15th, am I eligible to receive the grant funding to cover expenses from fiscal year 2021? So it's expenses are eligible as of March 3rd, 2021, just to clarify, but um, yes, so you can apply for your business license today, as long as you can show proof that you applied and that you paid for your business license and you have that confirmation, then, then you are eligible and we can look up your business on the Atlanta, um, City of Atlanta website um, and we'll be able to see if your business um, license was submitted. So, yeah. So how about if they applied for, okay, we're getting a little hard, to, but how about if they applied for a business license and they were in Cobb or Fulton or, or, or just even out of state, could they apply for expenses to get reimbursed if they weren't in the city? That's a good question. That's a good so, one. That's a, we'll have to get uh, back to you. Yeah. On that one. Think about that one. <laughs> I'm telling you, as we look at these questions, but thank you for the questions because we're writing them down and we'll make sure we have clarity to you as we move forward. Okay, to confirm, no duplication for the same time frame, but can use for a different time frame. For example, they have payroll costs, they must have got PPP and they used it for 2021, but they didn't use it for 2022. So could they submit the payroll costs, not for 2021, that was covered, but 20. Well, excuse me, not 2020, but for 2021. Yeah, so it's it's just the time, the timing of it. So if you receive PPP and it covered March through June of 2021, but you still had to pay out of pocket for payroll for July through December or July through March, um, then you can submit reimbursement for that. It's really just the exact same expenses. It's not the the um, the category of expenses, the exact same expenses we're making sure that aren't being double dipped. Okay, so I hear that I've answered several of these questions, Melody, about businesses that are having uh, issues or challenges with the Department of Revenue uh, on their business license. Well, what I will do is let, I will reach out to the business license department and ask them to set up a um, a webinar just on the business license because I've seen now several questions. I, I'm I'm not trying to I'm not an expert so I don't want to give you misinformation. So let me do this. We will send out another webinar. I will send a request today to see if I can get someone to come speak to the business license issue so that we can address them and get you some help because we do want to make sure that you are eligible. So I'm not, I, I just not an expert enough to know the system well enough to answer your question. Okay, what about if you receive a disaster loan from EIDL grant? Are you still eligible? Yes, so similarly to PPP, we ask that you disclose that information on your duplication of benefit certification form and share with us what those funds were spent on and show that they were spent on expenses that are different than the expenses that you're asking for reimbursement under the research and grant fund. So that's a good, just a good clarifying point. Having received any other funding sources is totally fine. You can you can have received resurgence last round. You can have received EIDL, PPP, any other 
funding, COVID relief funding, as long as the funds were used on expenses that are different than the expenses that you're asking for reimbursement for this round of the research and grant funds. Okay, uh, note to self, thank you. It says the financial hardship affidavit is not listed on the website. So we will make a note of that and make that change today. Thank you very much for noting that to us. What date will selected applicants be notified? So that is a good question. Um, and it really just depends on the volume of applications that we receive. Um, as I mentioned, applications will be reviewed as they're submitted to hopefully notify as soon as possible. Um, there will be a scoring process after applications close um, because we are anticipating this to be a competitive process. Um, so I, I cannot give you a definitive date when they'll be notified, um, but I would imagine within a few months after the application's closing is when we will be ready to announce um, grant recipients. Okay. Um, so just, again, another question, the 1099 contractors do not count as part of payroll because they're a 1099 contractor, but they still can submit those, right, as expenses, Melody? Yeah, I think so. I think technically, you know, like, like we um, discussed, it, technically they're not employees of the business, but it is a sort of payroll expense. So I would still submit that, um, you know, as, as an expense for reimbursement, as long as you can provide, again, the, the contract agreement um, in the 1099 to support that. It says, what time, what is the ending time for eligible expenses? So it's really just whenever you submit your application. Um, <laughs> the last round, I, I will note it, we had people submit their application and then provide receipts much after the fact, um, which really just created a long process. The real, in this round, there's really a, a pretty long time frame where expenses are eligible. So as soon as you can um, submit those receipts, you can submit them on the front end um, yeah, as soon as, as soon as you submit your application is, is when they can, when they can be considered eligible. Okay. So it says my business is located in an incubator and my lease is not updated every year. However, I pay every month. Will my initial lease agreement and payment be, be a payment be submitted be enough? That's what I'm thinking about. So we really, we need to see a renewed current lease. So if you are in that situation, I would reach out to your landlord or whomever you submit your, um, your payments to, to get some sort of updated document. If we receive a lease or similar document that's dated in 2019, and it says that it's only a year term, then we cannot consider that as a verifiable document. Um, so if you're in that situation, definitely reach out to your landlord, see if you can get an updated document with a current date, a new term on there. Um, it really has to be current for us to verify. Are funds dispersed on a rolling schedule or dispersed when the application is closed? So once the application is closed and once all applications are reviewed for eligibility, as I mentioned, we'll do the scoring process um, and see who our grant, um, our grant recipients are. And then from there, funds will be dispersed based on that and really just based on um, capacity. I imagine there will be several batches, um, but it'll all be after, after all applications are reviewed and scored. Okay. Um, so yeah, so again, yes, startups can apply. You just need to have a business license, yep. current business license in the city of Atlanta. Yeah, there are this, with this round of funding there, the eligibility criteria, we've been able to expand per treasury guidelines. So last round, a business had to have been operating for, I think a year, maybe two years prior um, in order to be eligible. Startups are eligible now, again, as Elisa mentioned, just making sure that your startup is registered on Secretary of State and has that 2022 City of Atlanta business license. 
Okay, this one's a good one, Mel. This one is a nonprofit, but I guess the question would be for businesses too. If our nonprofit organization is larger than 250 employees total, but only has 250 employees in the city of Atlanta, can we still apply? If how many employees are probably registered in the state, maybe? Um, that's a good one. We may have to take that one offline. I wanna make yeah. sure we fully understand. Yeah, I'm sure there. I'm sure there's nuances to that question that we need to um, dig into. So, if who, whoever asked that question, please send an, an email to resurgence at investmentlanta.com, and uh, we can follow up. Okay. Um, for lease requirements, okay, here we go. For lease requirements, do we need both old and new if we move locations in 2021 due to increased rent and decreased revenue? So if I'm understanding the question, it sounds like this business was at one location, paid rent for a few months out of 2021, and then moved to a different location um, and paid rent there. So the answer would be yes, if you're submitting um, rent payments as for reimbursement, um, we'll need to see a lease for each location that you were paying rent at. Um, all right, so Michelle, there seems to be more questions. So Michelle or Catris, can one of you take over asking the questions for Melody for, for me, please? Sure. Okay, so we have one that says, if your own employee and paying yourself, if you are your own employee and paying yourself with handwritten checks, um, can that be claimed as payroll documentation? That one is tricky. And I think it probably depends on how your business is incorporated. Um, so that also is one that I'd like to take offline too, just to make sure I understand the, the nuances of your business. So whoever asked that question could send an email to resurgence at investalinda.com. Be great. Awesome. What about stipends for interns? Will this count as an employee? Yeah, I think that's similar to kind of the subcontractors. Um, as long as you know you can provide some sort of document that shows that these people were paid under your business um, and can provide proof of payment. To me, that's you know same as um, as payroll. So, okay. If you have a a nonprofit and a for-profit business. Can you apply for both businesses? You can, as long, and that goes for, if you have two for-profit businesses or two nonprofit, as long as each business has, it, as long as each entity has a separate application and provides the necessary documents um, for the for-profit and for the nonprofit. So if you have, um, so I guess, similar question, if you have two for-profit businesses, both for-profit entities will have to have a separate city of Atlanta business license um, and have to fill out a separate application. So yes, just making sure that there's a separate application for each entity. Awesome. Now, this one may be for our licensing webinar, but I have a certificate of occupancy. Is assistance available to help me secure my city of Atlanta business license? Yeah. So let us reach out to the um, business license department um, and see about getting a webinar on the books for that. Um, and we can we can definitely um, connect you with someone uh, there. Awesome. Okay, so we talked about the startups. And it says my 2021 license is still pending due to no fault of my own. Because of this, I can't submit my 2022 document or pay. I've applied through the new system and reached out several times to get something done. Um, again, this is related to the business license. Is this something that should yeah. be directed to the person we can that will join us for that webinar? Yeah, definitely. And we're keeping note of all of these uh, specific questions regarding business licenses and we'll make sure that everyone um, at least attending here, but we'll send it out more broadly to participate in that webinar and make sure all these questions um, and concerns get answered. Okay, can we 
use loss of revenue from canceled fundraising events as a result of COVID? Unfortunately, loss of revenue is an ineligible expense. Um, there is, I didn't go through the ineligible expenses in this presentation today, but if you go to our website, there is um, a list on the grant um, program overview of ineligible expenses, that being one of them. But definitely take a look at those um, to look at what else is ineligible. Okay. If you're submitting for rent reimbursement, do you still need to submit for your payroll journals? Yes. Um, we are asking the payroll journals as of uh, December 31st, 2021 to confirm that your business has less than 250 employees. So even if you're not um, asking for um, payroll reimbursement, we are using that documentation to verify number of employees of your business. Does the save affidavit have to be notarized? Yes, the save affidavit has to be notarized. Okay. And if a person is um, a mobile event bartender or has a mobile business, are they eligible? As long as that mobile business has a city of Atlanta business license, then yes. Okay, if we're experiencing purchasing cost of goods sold as a hardship, what would we need to prove to apply for this grant? Can you repeat that question? Sure. If we are experiencing purchasing cost of goods sold as a hardship, what would we need to do to prove that to apply for this grant? I'm not sure if I understand that question. Okay, um, maybe, Michelle, if you don't mind sending that to our um, resurgence at investatlanta.com, that will help us answer that question for you. Okay, I have a technology developer that is my employee, but it's paid through W-9. Would that expense qualify? Yeah, if, so if, you know, if you're paying this person, again, it's kind of like a subcontracting thing. It's, um, you're paying this person to do work for your business, to meet that's payroll, whatever documentation you have to support that you were paying that individual um, will, be, will be considered. Okay. Can the cost of inventory be included for reimbursement? Unfortunately, no, that is also on the list of ineligible expenses. Okay, and will there be a technical assistance component again? So we will have a technical assistance program. We have created a program completely separate um, from the grant. So yes, but it's not tied in um, directly to the resurgence grant fund. So. Last round, the technical assistance was only available um, for our grant recipients. This round, and you, you'll see and hear more about this program in the coming weeks, um, but we've, we are launching a program that will be acceptable to both grant recipients and those who, don't, who aren't necessarily applying for our grant funding. Um, so there, there is a technical assistance program coming pretty shortly, um, but it's not tied directly to this grant fund. Okay, let's see, we've got 50 questions and about seven minutes left in the webinar. Um, all of the attendees will receive a link to watch this webinar again, in case you missed your question being answered earlier. You'll also receive a copy of this presentation so that you know where to direct your questions um, if they weren't answered during this session. I'm trying to find a question that, okay, did, did you state that you have to be registered with the state? If you have a 2022 Atlanta business license, does that cover being registered with the state? So no, a business needs to be registered with the secretary of state as well as have their city of Atlanta business license. So. Um, yeah, and you can just go to the Secretary of State website to complete that annual um, registration. Okay. What if the nonprofit is the sole owner of the for-profit business? Can they apply for separate funds? 
if the nonprofit is the sole owner of the for profit? I think as that if that person could follow up with me at the the research at investmentland.com email, I'd love to um, talk through that one a little bit more. Okay. All right, will we have to write something describing why we are applying for the grant and need the funding? Will this be a part of whether or not we will be selected? Yes, so there is a section of the application that asks you to you know, share how COVID has impacted your business. There, so there is um, a couple different narrative sections, short narratives, but yes, narratives nonetheless, and um, they will be considered in our um, scoring uh, review process. So, um, yes, answer your question. Okay, can we use the grant funds to catch up on payroll? And this person is a startup, by the way. So it has it has to be reimbursable. So the payroll has to have already been spent um, to to show that you know we have to see that those expenses were made before we can grant out the funds. Um, so I'm not sure how that exactly would work for you, but, but yeah, happy to, happy to chat further. If, there, if there's more um, nuance or detail there that I'm, that I'm not getting, feel free to um, reach out to the um, resurgence at investatlanta.com email and happy to chat further. Okay, um, if an invoice is dated prior to March 3rd, 2021, but payments submitted after March 3rd, 2021, is that a reimbursement expense? So, yes, yes. As long as the proof of payment is after March 3rd, 2021, um, yes. Okay, awesome. Okay, it looks like a lot of the questions that are left over are very specific cases or related to business licenses. Okay. Yeah, if um, so, like we mentioned, any questions regarding business licenses, we will follow up today on making sure that we get someone from that department to host a webinar and answer all those questions, hopefully get all those covered. Um, and then for the specific questions, I, I know there's a ton of nuance in each individual business that, again, you all understand way better than we do, um, but happy to meet one-on-one -on -one, um, to chat through some of those questions um, that, are, that are more specific to your situation and, and your business. Awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, there is a quick video that we wanted to share at the top of the presentation, but we wanna make sure that we leave this with you. And again, you'll be receiving a copy of this presentation as well as a link to this recording. And you're welcome to check our Facebook page, Invest Atlanta on Facebook for a, a recording as well. And then finally, there's an opportunity to join us this afternoon or this evening at 6 p.m. See if I can get to the video. Can you see it? No. Okay, great. Hold on one second. I'll, I'll stop. Okay, are you able to see this at all?
it's a little difficult for me to pull it up with all of the, let me see. I can see it's just, there, that's, that's good. I think we can see your. Michelle, you may need to activate the system audio for that. I can't hear anything. Okay, so it looks like we were having some problems hearing. So this will be a link as well that you will receive um, in the follow-up email for this webinar. I was afraid we might have some problems hearing that, but we'll make sure that you get the link so that you can see it along with everything else. Anything else you wanna add, Melody or Matt? Yeah, no, thank you so much uh, to the team and thank you all for joining us this morning. Um, as we mentioned, we're going to have another session at 6 p.m. this evening if you'd like to listen in again, as well as have the recording up on the website. Um, but if you have any questions that didn't get addressed or you, you forgot to ask, definitely reach out to resurgence at investatlanta.com. Um, you can also chat with us on um, investatlanta.com's website. Um, there's a link to our resurgence landing page and you can live chat with us there as well. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for joining us and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you.